So today I want to show you a fun technique you can use for generating so-called stochastic sequences or sequences that have some aspect of randomness to them. And I really like this technique since it will work also with other sequences, also in hardware, basically with any sequencer that can either run randomly or with external CV. Now the main idea is to choose the notes you want to be played, but also choose the probability of each note and how often they will play. Now two things before we begin, I added also the techniques from this video to the PDF I keep updating with tips and tricks in Bitwig, so if you're interested it's available on my Patreon page together with the project file from this video and other videos I published. And I also want to mention that there's a great video from Polarity where it takes a different approach to this, so I definitely recommend checking it out as well. Also today we will be using the node grid and since we will generate everything inside of the grid, we don't need the node in module, so I just delete this. And I have also the node grid itself set to monophonic and it will stop when not running. So now again, the idea is to select notes and probability for each note. So for this we will use the pitches module, with it we can select the notes we want, and I would like to add randomness to this, so instead of using the phase signal to drive it, we will use randomness with the dice module, right, this one here, right, this module will output a random value each time it's triggered, and we can use this value to jump randomly between the steps of the sequencer. So to trigger it, we will use the triggers module. Um, I would like to have eighth notes, so I will go with eight. If you want 16th notes, go with 16. If you want quarter notes, go with four. This will trigger the dice module and the dice will scan through the sequencer. Now, since we are using an external signal to drive the sequencer, there is no need for the pre-chord, right? So I can just disable it. And this sequencer will sequence the pitch of the voice that I have here. And for now I will use the same triggers also to trigger the voice, so the triggers will go also to this uh, gate output. So now what we will get is a random sequence, but we will only get the notes we have selected here on the sequencer, right? So if I hit play, and let me go here into the sequencer. Let me make this a bit bigger. I will choose for now to have all the notes on C2. Right, so now we get only the note C2. But let's say that I will add once also C3, let's say here. Right, so this note C3 has some probability of playing. We will get most of the time C2, but every now and then we will get C3. If I add, let's say, two steps of G3, uh, let's say one and two. Right, so now we get also the note G3 every now and then, and that's the basic idea. We have a sequencer that runs randomly, and according to how you set the sequencer, the more steps with the same note, the more probability this note has to be chosen, and fewer steps means also less probability. So let's do this, let's have more values. Instead of just eight steps, right, in this case just eight values, let's have 32, let's say, right, you can choose more or less. And again, for now, just as a starting point, I will set everything to C2, Right, so now C2, this note has 100% probability to play, it will be chosen each and every time. But now let's add a few other notes, so for example I can add 1, 2, 3, 4, let's say, of C3, so they have some probability to play. Let's go with two notes of E flat, let's say, and then a few Fs, let's say 1, 2, and 3, and then a few Gs. One, two, three, four, and five, let's say. Right, so you can choose the notes, you can choose the octaves even, 
and you can choose the probability of them actually playing. The more steps you have, the more control you have, the more resolution, right? Again, you can change the number of steps to have more or less values. Right, now another thing I would like to do is to get some space in between the notes and not get the same note twice, right? So if I have, for example, if I go in here again, I have lots of probability here for the note C2 to play. I don't want it to be or to play try twice or to trigger the voice twice with the same note. I want to have spaces between the notes and to trigger this voice only when there is a change in pitch or a change in note. Now I'm sure there are various ways of doing this, but one thing we can do is use a comparator. So for now, I will disconnect these triggers. Right, and we will use a comparator. We will use this one here, the non-even comparator. Right, this module will compare two signals and will output a gate or a trigger as long as the two signals are uneven or different. And what we will do is we will compare the sequence to itself and only when it's different, only when there is a change in the sequence and ch a change in notes, we will get a trigger. So for this, we will use once the sequence directly and once again the sequence, but a bit different in this case, a bit delayed. Right, so I will use the very basic here delay module and I will set it just a bit above zero. It can be 0 0.01. Right, now if I just use the sequence as it is, we will get nothing since it will never be different. It will always be the same, but the delay helps with the comparator. So this will be the second signal to compare. So now we compare the, sequ uh, the sequence with itself, a bit delayed, but it's the same sequence and only when it's different, only when it changes, we will get a trigger. So now listen to this. Right, so now only when there is a change in note, this voice will actually be triggered and we have some space between the notes. We got our stochastic pitch sequence. Now we can also do this for velocity, for example. So to have a stochastic velocity sequence. For this, we will use the steps module. Right, this one here, maybe again, make this a bit bigger. Right, something like this. Right, again, turn off the pre-chord. We don't need it now because we are using a random signal from the dice. Also here, let's increase the resolution. Let's again go with 32 different values. For now, let's just clear them. So again, we start with zero and let's have a few values. So let's say we will have more probability for this value here, right? This will be chosen more because it appears more on the sequence. Then we will have a few, right? With this, with this uh, value, a different probability, maybe a few that are quiet. And maybe just every now and then we will have a louder sequence. Of course, you can use uh, or more velocity. You can use also a different uh, dice module if you want. So both sequences will not run together. For now, I will just leave it as it is. Right, and again, according to how often the values repeat in the sequence, they will have more or less probability. So now this will go to the velocity output that controls uh, various things uh, in this voice that I have here. Right, so now we have also a velocity stochastic sequencer. So we don't uh, only choose the values we want, but also the probability, the more they repeat, the more probability they have to play. Now we can also create something repetitive, like a looping sequence. And also here we'll take a different approach. So instead of having some sort of a 
recording setup and record, uh, the, record the notes and gates and velocity. We can use another sequencer to scan through the other sequencers and randomize it until we find something we like. So again, I will use the step or the steps module here. Right, in this case, let's say that I want to have 16 steps, but I want it again to run with the same rate. So we will need the phase counter module, right, this one here, set it to 16. Right, set also the sequencer to 16. Right, so the counter will now count 16 steps. This we will use as the phase signal. Again, there is no need for the pre-chord because we are using an external phase signal. And this triggers, will trigger also the counter. Right, so now again we have eighth notes, but just a longer sequence, a 16 step sequence. And now all we need to do is reset everything. So in the inputs and outputs, we have the transport playing. If we send this to the reset input of the counter, every time we hit play or stop, everything will be nice and reset. And now we will use this here instead of the dice. So we get something looping, right? So this now will scan through the sequences. And again, we will randomize this until we find something nice. And also this will utilize the probabilities that we have here. Right, and we have a looping sequence. Maybe this one. Right, so again, also here we have the stochastic aspect, since different nodes will have more probability over others. But now it will be repetitive, it's a looping sequence. Now actually, um, we can have something also in between. So I will use here the blend module, maybe make some space here a bit. Right, I will use the blend module. Input one will be the stable sequence from this uh, steps sequence or module. The blend will go all the way to the left for now. And input two will be the dice, will be the random signal. Right, and now I can mix between them just a bit. So most of the time things will be stable, will be repetitive, will loop. But according to the values from the dice module, every now and then we will get some sort of randomness. And also here we have the probabilities set, so they will also come to account. Right, so now instead of using the dice or the um, steps here, I will use it from the blend. And blend is just a bit, let's say 98 and 2. Usually it's repetitive or most of the time it's repetitive, but every now and then we'll get a bit of randomness thanks to the dice. And that's it. You can see how fun this can be. Hopefully this was also inspiring. I have here a few more voices that I can add. I have here a kick with some side chaining. Hi-hats. Bass and an arpeggio. Right, this all runs with this uh, sequence in the background. Thank you again for watching. Come join us uh, on Patreon and Discord. Cheers.